Oh, <laughs> didn't see you there. Hello, I'm Simon J. Funky Monkey Broom. Welcome to my house of love. Yeah, alright, we'll uh, dispense with all this poshy stuff. <sighs> Much better. There you are. Now then, I'm British, and despite some of the less than glamorous excesses of the British Empire, I'm still proud to be a British person. None of which actually has anything to do with today's topic, ROD. Or does it? Released in 2001 in Japan, and picked up in 2003 by Manga Entertainment, Read or Die is the story of Yomiko Reedman and her mission to stop the Ijin from destroying humanity. So grab your reading glasses and open to page one. It's time for ROD, the OVA. Allow me to introduce you all to Yomiko Reedman. She loves books. Here she is, buying a rare book. I'll take this, please. 3500 Uh, oh. Yeah, I'm sorry to ask, but I only get paid once a month. But when a swarm of insects bursts out from nowhere, we discover there's something special about Miss Reedman. <gasps> Would it be terribly cliché of me to say, buzz off? And then, a man on a giant grasshopper steals her book. Which he promptly retrieves. Uh, give it back! Meet Joker of the British Library Special Forces. For now, I'll have to ask Agent Paper to please follow me. And I'll be borrowing this. She really loves that book. Joker takes Yomiko to see Gentleman the leader of the British Library Secret Division. Two days ago, Washington DC was attacked by a lone assailant. He left many injured before making his way on foot over to the Library of Congress archive. However, the circumstances are far more complicated than that. But Genai Haraga's been dead for over 200 years. Yes, we've concluded that somebody has created a clone of Genai Hiraga. This is Drake Anderson, ex-US Special Forces. I read my horoscope this morning. Excellent day. Really lucky. Ugh, so explain to me, if this is a lucky day, what's a bad day look like? Drake and Yomiko investigate the ruins of the Library of Congress. Well, Excuse me, what should I be doing right now? Go find a faraway corner to daydream in and don't get in anyone's way. Yomiko finds some rare books. And we meet our final team member, Miss Deep. And that's my superpower. You're not much in a fight, are you, Agent Paper? Nobody touches the glasses! Suddenly, Otto Lilenthal, aviation pioneer, appears. Book! Having stolen the book, he makes off for New York, where Genai Hiraga knocks out the power, and most of the opposition. If only there was some other way. There's always my way. In response, Yomiko, whose codename is The Paper, makes a giant paper aeroplane and sets off to retrieve her book. Three, two, one, fire! What? 
Lilenthal's glider is tethered to the Statue of Liberty and promptly destroyed. And so our first episode ends as Yomiko and Miss Deep, or Nancy, bond atop the Statue of Liberty. Our heroes are relaxing on their submarine, Yomiko's nose deep in her beloved book. Be calm and love me. Today and yesterday, what tearful longings I have for you. Ever thine, ever mine, ever ours! <sighs> They're en route to India to investigate another Aegean sighting. But back at HQ, we discover that Nancy isn't all she seems. Wendy. I've got a little project for you. Yomiko gives Nancy a lucky bookmark. And if you use it with the romance novel, it'll bring you true love. What would you choose? Would you take real love with all its complications or the picturesque romance in a story? I know what I'd rather have. No more sappy talk about love in this anime. Almost there, sir. Roger that. Uh, prepare to surface. The pair investigate Jahal's suspiciously quiet bookstore. Work before pleasure, Agent Paper. Uh, yes, sir. And then we're introduced to this episode's Ijin, Genjo Sanzo. Titan Genjo Sanzo Hosh! The pair are pursued and attempt to return to their submarine. Let's go! But oh dear! Someone's got a prayer for that! Escalanta. Drake fires a torpedo at Sanzo. Which predictably misses. Foolish. But Nancy has a plan. I'm gonna try to disable his weapon. You're gonna hit him while his defenses are down. All right. No! Yomiko spares no love for the book thieving Buddhist and gives him a serious paper cut. That stuff did Nancy no good. And Yomiko loses her book. <laughs> Got it. No! Wait! Give me back my Nyoi bow, and then we'll end this. As Sanzo takes a skull staff through the neck, we meet our main villain. Hurry up! <laughs> Nancy wakes up in hospital, healing from her injuries. You've been sleeping for two days. They took your book. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. There's plenty of books in the world, but there's just one Nancy, and if we lose you, that's it. Oh, foreshadowing. Our heroes take off for their next target. But then, from out of nowhere... More people live on our planet than I ever thought possible. But as I'm sure you understand, too much of anything is unhealthy. A teaching I know all too well. How does one judge who deserves to live or die? Isn't it about time you came home to your family, Nancy? And Nancy was one of them all along. Until next time, Agent Paper. And so, our second episode ends with the beginning of Operation Destroy the Aegean. People, our top priority is the destruction of the Aegean. Wendy, <laughs> fetch us some tea. Yes, sir, of course, right on it! Ah, dear Wendy, so sweet and clumsy.
And with that, let us begin our plans for the destruction of the Ejin army. We open as Drake and Yomiko gear up to infiltrate the Ejin steam-powered fortress. We'll have you begin your infiltration. The research team reports that the analysis on the handwriting from the book margins has been completed. But oh dear, their transport is shot down. The food, El Beatles. And they're told to stay put and wait for further orders. Good. I've got to go. If I don't hurry up, then Nancy might not be... She's a spy! But then, they're assaulted by a young father. And Nancy's kiss takes hold. Yomiko awakes to find herself shackled and paperless. You're finally awake. And then, Ikkyu brings Nancy, a clone of Matahari, to the party. And then he kills her, with a clone of her. Nancy, no! Following this, Yomiko is left to drown. Luckily, there's a tiny paper tie on her braid. But shock! Drake's alive! And now he must destroy the base's reactor. Let's have the map. Drake faces down Genai Hiraga when Yomiko bursts in. Using cash from Drake's wallet, Yomiko fights Hiraga, and Yomiko finishes him off with a fistful of dollars. Shock! Good Nancy's alive! Nancy, it's you. The two Nancys battle for supremacy while Yomiko goes after Ikkyu. Mr. Joker! The rocket is launching! Meanwhile, Drake overcomes Fabra's giant insect and stops the launch. But oh dear. And as the rocket launches, our beautiful bibliomaniac is clinging to the outside. Yomiko won't be denied. I want you to stop the rocket, then surrender peacefully, and after that, I want you to give me back my book. And then Nancy joins the fray. Things. Nancy. You made it. As they rocket towards the stratosphere, Yomiko must make the ultimate sacrifice. I'm ready yet. What else can we do? Think quick before we end up in space. When I open the door, get ready to jump. <laughs> and so the enemy is defeated and all is well. So that was R.O.D. And you know what? After Mangle Entertainment's atrocious dub of Pat Label, I'm going to put this one into the House of Love. Sure, Gaijin Productions that produced the dub still changed lines and added gratuitous swears, but it was a lot more in keeping with the spirit of the original language. I was more concerned with the myriad dodgy English accents. Dodgy dub accents aside, this is an action-packed, twisty, turny spy thriller mixed with a touch of sci-fi silliness and all wrapped up in a long brown coat and the cutest pair of glasses I've ever seen. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. Cheers!